Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lokes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this video lesson, we are continuing to look at the equipment, but this time we're looking at pipes. So what are the considerations that you need to think of when selecting the proper pipe size? First, it's really important that you know that pipes come in standard sizes. This is not something that you're going to custom design. Um, if you choose too small of a pipe, you're going to end up with high pressure drops, and that's going to end up decreasing your flow rate. And it's also going to increase the rate of corrosion, which is particularly hazardous if you have dangerous chemicals in those pipes. Now, if you have too large of a pipe, it's going to be more expensive, and you also end up with a larger area for insulation and, sadly, for heat loss. What we normally do is use heuristics as a way to get started. Normally I design initially with a liquid flow rate of 1.5 meter per second and a gas flow of 20 meters per second. And I use these to estimate my pipe diameter. Now those standard liquid flow rates are based on good design principles that do involve things like the rate of corrosion, but also they're going to be related to safety hazards for hearing. There's going to be a lot more noise the higher the velocity is. So these are, you know, some good solid limits that we want to consider to be kind of upper limits, not firm, but close. Now use this to estimate your pipe diameter. So, right, volumetric flow rate is mass flow rate times density, and it's also equal to velocity times area. And so we can use that to solve for the diameter. Now, you probably are familiar with this, but just in case you aren't, we have things that are called nominal pipe sizes. And so this is kind of the mid-range for industrial purposes, four, five, six inch pipe, four and a half inch. There's not every possible size here, and they are called four inch, but then when you look across at the table here, and I got this from Wikipedia, it's a little hard to figure out exactly where they got the four inches, because if it's a four and a half inch outer diameter, and in a standard or schedule 40 pipe, though, diameter is, or the wall thickness rather, is 0.237, then that means that it's actually going to be a little bit more than four inches. So there isn't going to be any particular measurement that is that four inch nominal, but we just call them by these nominal sizes because they're close and all industry pretty much manufactures to these sizes. Now, typically what we're going to do is default to a Schedule 40. Schedule 40 is the standard. You can go to lower, like even a Schedule 10, Schedule 5. Those tend to be used for things like drain pipes where there is no pressure issue. Uh, if you go to a higher schedule, Schedule 80 or 120, then that's going to be stronger. And the pressure that can be withstood is going to depend on the material you choose and the schedule, the thickness of the walls. So for instance, on wrought steel, I looked that one up and we have this pipe here. So for instance, for four inch pipe, the bursting pressure is 5270 and the working pressure, this is the one you should be focusing on for what you're designing, should be 660 PSI. Now, you can compare this to Schedule 80, and for Schedule 80 at 4 inch, notice that you can go up to working pressure instead of 660, you can go to 940. So that's a fairly significant increase in the pressure. But you want to always make sure that you are selecting the schedule of the pipe and the diameter for the pressure that you expect. Now, I had you calculate a diameter so far based on an expected linear velocity. How are you going to complete this first round of your estimate? So you found a diameter and it's not one of the inside diameters that's on the tables. Okay? Probably isn't. It just never is. So generally what I recommend is find the two closest entries, one smaller and one larger, and use those to calculate what the linear velocity is. So you're sort of working backwards. 
and then look at those velocities and decide if you are happy with them. In general, if you're happy with both choices, then choose the smaller one. But you want to choose the smallest that's going to allow for the maximum capacity that you ever expect to need. Okay. Now this is just our first guess at what the diameter is. Most of the time I actually end up being able to sort of settle on this value. It doesn't change too much. Um, but we want to now look at our installed system. So I need to think about how much pipe I'm going to need, what fittings, what's going to be the pressure drop across this. Okay, so ideally you're really building this. You know where the two pieces of equipment are that you're trying to connect. You know where a pipe rack is. Do you need to go up over a road or can I just go straight across? You would know all that sort of stuff in real life. Okay. Now, when you do this, you add up the length of the pipe and the equivalent length for all of those fittings to determine an equivalent length of pipe. Now, for our purposes, we're going to assume that our equipment will be fairly closely placed. And so we'll just say that we need 100 feet of pipe. OK, that's the equivalent length that would include all of our fittings. And that's not bad if you are doing things that are just like one piece next to the next, next to the next. OK, now if you have a gas stream, you can expect that over that 100 foot of pipe, you'll have about half a PSI of pressure drop. On liquids, it's a little bit more complicated. On the suction side, you have about 0.4 PSI per 100 foot of pipe. And on the pump discharge side, you're going to have about two pounds per 100 foot. Now, if you have a control valve in the line, you're gonna to need to add an additional, and this is a heuristic again, about 10 pounds of pressure across the control valve. So let's say we were looking at the pump discharge pipe. We've got 12 PSI there. That's particularly significant. I want to make sure that my pump I've selected is going to allow for that extra 12 PSI. So you may need to go back into your design to make sure that you have adequate sizes for your pumps at this point in time. And sometimes we just do because we don't know maybe what the maximum flow is ever going to be something like that and so you know I have done things like we're just a blanket 20 percent excess uh, design factor on this just to make sure I have adequate flow but you do want to make sure that you accommodate this now to you use all this because we go back to where we were when we were talking about our pumps so you want to now go back to your pump curve and all those calculations you did. These pipe sizes and fittings are going to change the values for the head losses, the H sub F factor, the frictional loss losses. And we do our extended Bernoulli equation and we need to go back through those calculations again. Now at this point you want to make very sure that for the pump you selected, where are you on that pump curve? Okay. Now, this really gets more to the detailed design of the plant. So for our purposes for our course, you do not need to go to this step. But you do want to make sure that you have added extra horsepower to your pump. OK, and you want to choose a, an appropriate pipe diameter for all of your lines. So this concludes this lesson. Thank you very much for your time.